Oh, hi. I'm Joe McDonald, and today I'm going to be talking about using live composite to photograph fireflies in the evening as they're doing their bioluminescence. Fireflies, first of all, are not flies. They're sometimes called lightning bugs, but they're actually a beetle, a bioluminescent beetle, a beetle that can generate its own light. They're a, a phenomenon of the eastern United States and uh, really an incredible insect. The important thing when you're setting up for something like this is to scout out your location beforehand. So I've uh, found a spot where I don't have telephone wires that are running through the property and uh, out of the way of any car lights that might be going by. And by the way, I dropped the wireless microphone into the stream a few minutes ago. Duh. The live composite works differently than a traditional time exposure. With a traditional time exposure, the light is additive. So if you had a, let's say you were shooting a, a landscape of the of moon with the moon illuminating it. If you had it on long enough, the illumination of the moon could actually overexpose the landscape image. I've done this in the, with uh, cameras that did not have the live composite feature, and it looked like I was shooting it midday. It really didn't work. How live composite works is after the initial exposure is set, no other light registers on the sensor unless it is brighter than the light that already exists. The settings for this could be a little tricky. I'm not quite sure how bright the, bio, the bioluminescence will register. So I'm gonna be using ISO 1600, which is the maximum with the, uh, the Mark III cameras uh, live composite feature and I'm going to use the fastest shutter speed possible which is one half of a second because when the lightning bugs are blinking sometimes they'll fly and if I'm using a, a longer exposure that blink if it would last longer than a half a second let's say it was going on for a second and a half it would go as a big long streak across the sensor by using a half second exposure I'll minimize any streaking like that. For the settings, it will be ISO 1600. I'm going to shoot wide open because I, uh, I want as much light coming in as possible. And the actual shutter speed will be a half second. And the beauty of live composite is if I come wading into the stream later and look at the back of my camera, I'll actually see how many lightning bugs have registered. And they may be all over the place on the uh, sensor. And when it gets to the point where I think, well, this is pretty darn cool here, I can turn it off at that point, which I don't think is possible with any other camera system. It is really an incredible feature. So let's hope I don't drop anything else in the, in the uh, stream. And we'll wait for dusk. And we'll photograph fireflies. So one of the really neat features of this as well is I don't have to be down, uh, I'm getting one leg wet, but big deal. But I have the flip out screen so I can see everything going on in real time and at a pretty convenient position here. I'm using a really right stuff uh, ground pod and uh, uh, with a, I think it's a BH25 ball head, a very, very small ball head very lightweight and with this then I'll have a stable platform and I'll be ready to go. The other neat thing that it has, the LCD screen here, is it has a level. So if I'm composing I can see on the level if in fact I'm level or not. And when I am, just lock in my ball head here I'm ready to go. So I'm back in the studio and I wanted to go over those settings that I showed when I was in the stream and I think I'll be a little bit more methodical when I'm here in the uh, studio because I'm not worried about getting bit by deer flies or having my gear dropped into the uh, creek. So to work live composite what we need to do is go to the menu 
and then scroll down. And right now I'm using the um, Mark II camera, the OMD Mark II. And first thing I have to do is go down to Composite Settings. Oops, right here. And right now it's set at one half second, but it could be set for one, 1. 1.16 seconds or one second, two seconds, all the way, if I kept on going, to 60 seconds. So the important thing here is to determine the ambient light exposure that will be the basis of all of the exposures. And for these lightning bugs, I'm using one half second because I don't want the blur of the lightning bug as it's, as it's flying to create a big long streak. And for that then, I'm gonna to have to raise my ISO up fairly high and shoot it wide open. And after that initial exposure is set, then as I said before, the only light that will come up after that, or what that will register, will be light that is brighter than what's presently there. So I have my composite setting set. And then the next thing I'll do is go, I'm sorry, be on manual mode and change my shutter speed. And this is different with the Mark II camera versus the OMD Mark III. And right now I have it on live composite. With the Mark III and the M1X camera, there's actually on, on the dial itself, you have bulb and you again roll your shutter button and you'll go from bulb to live view to live composite. It's a little confusing at times if you use one camera and then you go to the other and it's like, where the heck is that piece? But um, with a little practice, you can do that. So let's illustrate this with a shot of the interior of my studio slash YouTube studio. And I'm going to pretend that I'm a lightning bug. So what I'm going to do here is I'll set up the composition. Well, right now we have a live comp at F13, so it's very, very dark. And if I press on the shutter, it's now saying ready for composite shooting. So I'm going to Start shooting. Let's do a couple more of those. And you can see there that there's blinks now that are kind of uh, symbolic of a lightning bug blinking. And then you can also see that at uh, that half second, I moved my flashlight and created those two streaks at the one point. But the only thing that registered was the brighter light. So when we're finished, here's that finished result. So that's how that works. So let's actually look at some results here. Here's our, our Firefly. This was shot using a Cognosys uh, equipment, the insect rig, and that was with electronic flash. But um, these were the shots that were done with the live composite. And the first time that I, I did one that was reasonably su successful, I incorporated the lightning bugs and a star trail. As the stars move through the sky, every time, every movement is registered on what was previously a black area. And so I had that going for maybe, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes or so. And in the meantime, in the foreground, the lightning bugs or fireflies were going. And I also used some light painting where I used a flashlight and kind of painted in the foreground beforehand. That's a bit tricky. It's actually better to first paint in your scene and then let the live composite continue because if you have a beautiful series of lightning bugs and, and star trail, and then you paint it and you paint an area too bright, you've just ruined the shot. Here's one where 
It was a one half second exposure, but the uh, the fireflies or lightning bugs, some of them flew very, very close to the camera lens. And even though they were only, the shutter was if in effect only registering for a half second, during that time, those fireflies, several of them, moved quite a distance. And then this is one I was kind of happy with. I had a uh, set it up in the middle of a creek and then I did this one for almost three hours and I just wanted to see if we could just explode the field with uh, with fireflies and, and it certainly did so. That was the shots and uh, you can see you can have a heck of a lot of fun with this. So that's live composite as I used it for the fireflies or lightning bugs just the last couple of days and I intend to do more with it. Now, I'm also working on a video on time-lapse photography and I'm really excited about another project I'm doing that I'll be bringing up soon and that is making your backyard a bird studio. And I'm taking some really interesting or fun shots of Baltimore Orioles and catbirds and cardinals and things. And I'll show you how I set that up and made a really interesting, easy bird photography studio. So they'll be on the YouTube channel shortly. And I would urge you to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of these. And I'll be letting people know on Facebook as well when we have that posted. So please subscribe.